show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You are listening to us live on LRN.FM. You can also get us on Stitcher, iTunes, and go uh, subscribe to us on YouTube because we are broadcasting live on YouTube. You can find that at revelofshow.com slash watch. I am Ron Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today our guests are none other than the Truth Over School podcast of Brett Vinat <laughs> and Carlos Morales. I like combining both of those. That's a ch- Truth yeah. Over School. That's actually, that's well done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you guys should do a uh, podcast together. You guys are great together. We've done a lot of podcasts. <laughs> yeah, just start we've your got, own, just start a spinoff show. Uh, we've, uh, we've talked about it. Yeah, trying to just trying to reorient it and putting it put it in a good way so it's not just me yelling at a microphone on a constant basis, which is generally kind of what I do. Yelling mostly, right? Yeah, this will be the thing. It'll be Carlos, and he'll be talking about like some problem that he's having with some group of people, and he's just yelling at me. Yeah, I'm saying, Carlos, we got to take this to the street. Yeah. So I have this idea for a, sh- a video <laughs> show. It's called Carlos Confronts America, and he just goes to like, what's a place you don't like? Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. You just wait, go wait. to Dunkin' Donuts and you yell at the people who are in line. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get with it your together. Life? Yeah. This what, is what you drink. What is your beef with Dunkin' Donuts? Man? Okay, first off, what the fuck is it that they're actually? Serving? serving you right it's not Have coffee you, it's not coffee it's it, not. it is it is brown piss that they're giving you in a cup and right. charging you two dollars with i don't think it's piss it's not even worth like, piss it's not even that that costly it's just water it's brown it's water hot water uh-huh. I've accused them. I have actually accused them. I've gone in there with coffee. This is how my relationship with Dunkin' Donuts came to an end. Okay. I went in there and I said, I think you gave me water. I think this is water with cream in it. And uh, you know, they gave me another coffee. It tasted the same. I said, I think I'm done. I think I'm done here. Uh, yeah. Their coffee has no flavor. I think over time they like. I remember like I grew up in New England, and you know when I was a kid, I hear the coffee was very good. You know, Dunkin' Donuts. Everybody loved Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. I think just over the years, they continuously diluted their coffee to the point where today it is pretty much just water. Yeah, so whenever I first came up to, to New Hampshire, Dunkin' Donuts were everywhere. I'm, I'm from Texas, which there's a few Dunkin' Donuts, but nothing really. Yeah. And when I first got here, I was like in this crappy mood the entire time because I was going to Dunkin' Donuts to buy coffee, and I was just tired all the time. And then I finally had one good cup of coffee while I was down here. I was like, oh, it was caffeine withdrawal because there's nothing that's a- that's I'm actually getting out of the Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You can't. It can't have caffeine in it if it's just water. Yeah, it's just water water and it's absolute crap I and i do not understand the obsession in new england with dunkin donuts i mean i think it's it's a small microcosm of how terrible most of the food in new hampshire is i love new hampshire it's great but cuisine food wise culture terrible nothing nothing See, at all here whatsoever i'm gonna disagree with you I oh love, yeah I usa love usa chicken and biscuits amazing no, it really no, no, just no, no, no. speaks to the culture of uh, <laughs> new hampshire's great uh, food delicacies fat white people in the snow really know how to make them some good food wait, wait, wait. first off usa chicken and biscuit oh yeah that is not white people that's true. That, that is food. that that is the the like one out of every hundred dark people inside of New Hampshire cooking food. So that's when it's actually can be okay. But I don't know. Well, you just say a bunch of fat white people. I'm just trying to make yeah, sure yeah, that the that other one knows that those are not the people making USA that's chicken true. and biscuit. Apparently, it is, <laughs> yes, it is the people eating at the USA chicken and biscuits and ah. the fine other restaurants that are located in the beautiful I, New Hampshire. I kind of like some of the restaurants I've had so far in New Hampshire. I don't know. I've I, had I, good I, Asian food and Thai food on a yeah. yeah. Man, Bistro is good. Oh, there's tons of good restaurants in New Hampshire, and if you go down to like Boston, the, some of the if best you, restaurants in the country. Are if in you Boston. go to Boston, you're good to go. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. it's it's, and if you go up to Portsmouth uh, within New Hampshire, again, great cuisine there and everything else. Yeah. It, Manchester overall, it's kind of dodgy, but I, I guess I just I did just get uh, moved straight here uh, from Asheville, North Carolina, and there, I mean, it was just restaurants is all kind of they do. Uh, but, of course, there's no actual jobs outside of being a waiter or working at a restaurant in Asheville. So that kind of explains their economic conditions. It's, you know, like hipsters who move over there who are really into chakras and crystals and everything else in retirement communities and move over there. Basically, people with money already by the time they move over there. So what do they want to do? They want to spend it. So in places like Asheville and a few other kind of bubble towns, it's nothing but restaurants and expensive places to spend all of your money. Huh. I'm taking the rest of your coffee. Yeah, it's a good call. Go, go for it. <laughs> I'm talking too quickly. But at any rate, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts is actually a good. I like coffee. I love Dunkin' Donuts. I'm a fan. I like their taste. Just say, I know it's weird. I know it's not that good. You but must I have like some it. amazing. I taste enjoy buds. it. <laughs> I enjoy it. No, no, don't get me wrong. I love good. I like going to actual good coffee. You know, getting um, uh, going to a really nice coffee house and getting a nice uh, uh, roast or whatnot. But if I'm on the go. And if I had to choose getting coffee on the go when I'm like I have no time to get coffee, but I need coffee, I'm not going to go to Starbucks. No offense. 
And uh, well, there's Dunkin' Donuts everywhere here too, so there's a big convenience factor yeah. there. And, and it's better than you, McDonald's. You are drinking black coffee right now. Yes, so and I normally drink says coffee to black. Your taste. Yeah. I, I, and I normally I, drink coffee black. And McDonald's is Newman's own mm-hmm. now. Is it really? Which it's, is a far superior coffee. It, it is better. McDonald's really? coffee is actually better yeah. than oh. uh, yeah. than Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Oh. And it's cheaper. I thought he just made marinara. I didn't know he made coffee. A Newman? Yeah. Newman makes everything. Newman Whoa. O's. There's Oreos. That are vegan friendly. What? Well, yeah. regular regular Oreos are vegan friendly. That's true. Yeah. But then people have issues with Nabisco because something in Africa. It's always It always just goes back. It to always Africa. leads back to Africa. People with our their origins, causes. our Oreos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're already a vegan, can you like, if, if you're already going to that holistic level, can you then justify buying Nabisco Oreos? You have to do so like a pretentious version of Oreos mm. in order to be able to justify the stupidity that is your life <laughs> where you decided that I'm going to go ahead and never eat meat again because I don't enjoy pleasure. Hmm. Abstinence or something. It's all sexual, See, I'm, well, I'm, religious. I'm, I'm keep on the other side of this. I, I prefer not eating meat. I'll have it as a treat meal, as a cheat. They don't have it as my normal but, but daily vegan, diet. Vegan unless it's, turns it that other crank. Oh no, they take it way too far. Yeah. Where like you can't eat honey because you make bees slaves. Yeah, I mean, how fucking ridiculous is that? No, I, I hear you. Not, I, I, I got exposed to some of that when I went down to whole like vegetarian route. But uh, yeah, you can't drink specific types of beer because there may have been some kind of animal product within it. I mean, everything has animal products in it. I just realized amazing. my dinner had three animals in it tonight. You yeah. killed three three whole animals or life forms. I don't eat carbs, <laughs> three sentient so life forms. You killed. <laughs> I said to Ali, I said, I want cheeseburgers. You know, but we don't. I don't eat buns, so um, I do kill the animals. Save I do, the wheat. I do a fried egg, right, and then I do the bun, and then I put bacon on it. That's cow, chicken, chicken. Uh, fuck them. Cow, chicken, and pig. I yeah. think chickens are the worst animals. Huh. They're they're retarded. I mean, those pecky in the face, and they actually they'll drown themselves if they're let outside. They stare up into the sky and they drown. Oh, I've I mean, heard of that. Yeah, that is how stupid they are, and people feel bad for those things. That's absolutely ridiculous. Hmm. We should kill all the chickens, or just keep harvesting their their bodies. So you're for uh, you're food. on favor of the uh, um, the the way the big agra di- uh, does chicken raising. Oh, um, you know, I'm, suppo- the, like, the I'm, su- I'm supposed to like care. That. Like, I dated a vegan for a while, and I've watched all the videos, and I'm into the paleo and everything. But I don't. I don't really care about chickens because they're stupid. So do they're like ants. Like, if we were to put a bunch of ants all together in a little factory, I wouldn't. Most people wouldn't care. But ants are actually smarter than chickens. It's just the only reason we care is because they're bigger. I want chickens that that when that have their feet touch the ground during their lives. That's it. I, in fact, I would. So, yeah, I, I only buy chickens uh, if they have a pedometer on them, <laughs> and I can see how far they walked in their lives. So that's true. So that's a nice feature. So you do cage free. You do cage. Do you purposely go after caged eggs? No, because they actually taste worse. See yeah, that that's yeah. that's the main issue. I, I I'm I'm at it from a level of just completely for the nutrition sakes, like. Eggs, I mean, chickens that were treated well mm-hmm. or at least fed better stuff, the yolk is actually, you know, more orange. It's filled with more choline, vitamin B12, B6, uh, good cholesterol, specific types of fat, uh, leucine, uh, number and other extensions of amino acids. So there's benefits there that you can sell me on more than I'm supposed to give a fuck about chickens. So basically you think you're, well... You kind of just go with because it tastes better, which I would agree. And yeah, yeah. Grass fed and organic is better. Yeah. It's, w- where but I have an issue with is actually the raising of pigs. Uh, how pigs, so? pigs are a lot smarter than chickens. In fact, they're 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 smarter than than dogs. Uh, and the way in which human beings right now are basically pumping them filled with every single kind of antibiotic. Well, when we come back from this uh, <laughs> exciting talk about farm animals, farm animals. <laughs> We'll come back with uh, Mark, Carlos, Fred, uh, Trey, and myself. Yeah, sorry for being so token in the beginning there. I, I'm, I'm calmed down. <laughs> so you guys don't need your mics? Are we no. Right That's now? no, we're live so on we're YouTube. We're still live on YouTube. Oh, great. Yeah. And I'm recording for uh, my own 
Oh, so this is good. No, wait. So I don't fucking need to. You don't have to. It's up to you. If you do, though, wait, we're going to cut this okay. out. We're going to get the, cut this portion out. So oh, you cut it out. Well, I cut. It depends. Your I'll, I'll cut. Might like I'll cut. That. If there's dead air, I'll cut yeah. out the dead air for, like, you know, if we're talking about something in regards to, like, fixing something or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but if there's something relevant or something funny to talk about, like, I'll leave it up on there. Mm -hmm. So that was a tight segment. A lot yeah. got a lot got addressed. I seriously don't give a fuck about chickens. I've always been playing. Fuck chickens. <laughs> that North Korean refugee, the one who was giving a speech, where she joked about how how human Americans oh. cared about animal rights. And she's like, Oh yeah, she was like, I like animals, but but <laughs> they we were fucking slaves for being raped. <laughs> was she like yeah. sassy? No. Sassy is someone who can be who doesn't understand the language and therefore has no inflection. Cool. Therefore, if her speech wasn't as good as it was, I'm always thinking it would have been the most boring mm -hmm. thing because she has no inflection because she didn't speak her language. So just this mundane, just, and then my mother was raped. And I was like really, really sad. So I was like crying during the speech, which has never happened. I was like fucking crying. It was really emotional. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, very serious. Interesting. And she seems so uncomfortable in the photo I have with her. She's just like, I hope you don't rate me. Hey, she uh, looked like she was about four feet tall. If, if you guys are tuned tall, in at uh, rebelofshow.com slash watch, uh, let me know any questions you have for Brett or Carlos. Or, you know, Rob or bring, myself. Bring up when we start. When we I, I'm in the chat room so I can see your questions. Uh, bring up how uh, that you're in the chat that people can listen to and go in. Yeah, yeah, I should mention that live too. Yeah. Yeah. Who is actually who is Liberty Phoenix? Uh, Ken, o God, I forget, I forget his last name. Ottinger. Ottinger. I just know him as Liberty Phoenix. He has a, a Phoenix on fire. Well, that's he was at Porkfest. He's at Porkfest. Um, what does that mean? He's gonna be here in like two weeks. We did. Well, that's why I need to see his face. So I can nice guy. He, he, he's he's a good guy. Usually wears a hat. White guy with a hat. Great job, guys. Glasses. Good description. Hey, we don't all look alike. I didn't, yeah, you, we don't. I don't think if you use a white guy in my head. You don't think me as a white guy? Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. What do you think me? What do you think me of? Uh, as the guy whose ethnicity I cannot figure out. You know, I played that card for a while when I got here. You're still playing that card in my mind. What's your ethnicity? I'm Persian. Yeah. All right. Figured about as much. Okay. Now sell me some rugs. Wow, Carlos. <laughs> hey, Why don't you, you just stab the chat? guy? Yeah. <laughs> see what I did? See yeah. How you see I just turned into the Puerto Rican? <laughs> What's a Puerto Rican credit card? A knife? Anyway. And we are back. This is the Rebel Love Show. And not picking up from our last conversation in our previous segments, uh, I'm going to start off with some uh, updates that's going on at uh, this table. Uh, Liberty Forums in a couple weeks. we got, uh, for one, the Rebel Love Show is going to be recording each day during Liberty Forum, which is what, March 5th? Uh, 5th through the 8th. 5th through the 8th, uh, 2.30 each day uh, of that event. I'm also doing two talks at that, uh, well, actually at Alt Expo. I'm doing a talk on secession for 20 minutes and then another talk on polyamory because apparently that's my two things I'm into nowadays. And uh, on the top of that, uh, the Rebel Love Show is going to be hosting the Liberty Forum party that's uh, March 7th at the Quill. All right, 1030. 1030? 1030. Uh, 1030, yeah, at the Quill. So if you, Saturday. If you didn't have a reason to buy a ticket to Liberty Forum, now you do. Come party with yeah. us. We teased it last episode. I made like a little commercial for the party, and it's on the Rebel Love Show Facebook page. You can check it out. With uh, there's some scantily clad females in it, so that that should encourage you to go watch yeah. it. Yeah, and so I'll throw in another reason. By the way, it's Carlos again uh, to go to Liberty Forum. I'll be speaking for the actual Liberty Forum event on Friday regarding uh, child protective services. Kind of going in on that, and it'll be the first time that my book is actually on sale for a physical copy. Ooh, with cool. a Ford added by our other guest today, Brett from School Sucks Podcast. That's me. I wrote it. And so people could go to Liberty Forum and get both of you to sign the book? Yes. Ish. 
Maybe. All your family. Or at least me. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. Carlos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't do autographs. Oh wow. Wait, wait, wait like, we gotta get into this. Hold on. Why? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just being pretentious. No one's ever no one's ever asked me for an autograph. Really? No. No. Actually, I, now I think about it. That'd be really cool to be asked Well, you autograph. produce a lot of audio content. Well, it's this, hard to autograph this, audio this content. The selfie is like yeah. the modern day autograph. Yeah, that's like you what don't it is. like you don't want someone to sign something. You want a photo of the person. That's very true. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So whenever you want, you get pictures of other people. Yeah, that's uh, that's their. What that's about an right. autographed selfie? Like that's you, that's like you take the you. picture with Ron Paul, but you do it in Snapchat, so you can write on the screen. And r- you just have Ron write his name. No, on you the bring screen. around a cart with you, like you had like, <laughs> the, the AV club in school. Yeah, and it has a printer, <laughs> like a print photo <laughs> printer, and you print it. <laughs> oh man! So come to Liberty Forum and get a written uh, autograph on Snapchat by Shire Dude. That's a good reason. Oh to, yeah, uh, Snapchat autographs. Yeah, Snapchat autographs <laughs> from Roblox Show it's and, at Liberty Forum. And buy my book. And of course, well, are you going to take Bitcoin? Uh, oh, for in person, absolutely. Okay. They, they can get your book already, right on the internet. You can get it already on the internet in the ebook form. There will be a second edition, which again is going to have that forward, and then I'm going to be going into the topic of medical kidnap, medical kidnapping, which has been the absolute most disastrous topic I've had to deal with. It has been just a fucking headache after another headache dealing with that subject. Speaking of that subject, are you tired of talking about it? Oh yeah. Although the medically kidnapped one is is different. And that it has to do with hospitals, so I can go into th- to medical organizations, psychiatric drugs. Also, it's ties with things like Medicaid. Um, so there's All right, that. Well, here's my thing. I want to I want to slightly get Brett's uh, opinion. You guys have done multiple podcasts together and all mm-hmm. that. Yeah. What do you be, What do you think he should talk about besides child protective services? Uh, that's uh, that, you're probably the well, best one to answer this. Carlos is a Renaissance man. He can talk about a lot of different topics. He knows a lot. Well, obviously. So I, I would feel like, I mean, I don't like talking about school. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I certainly can sympathize where you kind of, um, you have a niche, right? And it's good yeah. to have one because it helps uh, bring in, you know, a reliable audience. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's good. But um, we were talking here on the way about meeting people who listen to the show. And I find that, you know, people wanted to tell me school stories. Like about their school experiences, their children's school experiences. And I feel bad because I think through the work I've done, I've really misled them into thinking <laughs> that I give a fuck. Oh. <laughs> and oh. I mean, I'm not, we're just talking complete strangers. Like if yeah. I meet somebody and we start talking and we establish a rapport, I'll talk to them about anything that's important to them, you know, if I like them and I care about them, but that's something that takes time. Yeah. It, you know, when yeah. people just come up and they say, hi, I'm I'm this person, they don't even say, um, you know, I love your show and here's a story. They just go right into the story. That happened to me a lot. And um, I don't know. I, I don't have problems with people. I like meeting people. I like talking to people. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could talk about more things. Mm. It's uh, I'm I'm not even kidding. I've had people come to me and be like, "Hi, uh, I heard a show. Um, I was raped as a foster child." Like they jump into that. Now oh. I what am, what the fuck am I supposed to respond with? Empathy one, which I understand. <laughs> what, what's which your favorite episode? Like you have. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, <laughs> great. What's your favorite episode? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's it's so hard because I, here here's this is this this is dark, but essentially like, when I got to college, my first job internship was interviewing children who had been molested, and talking to child molesters. I worked at a nonprofit. Right, so every single day I would deal with at least two or three people crying on me every single day, and then I go home and I had an emotional girlfriend, so I dealt with that too. And then when I when I had my and then I you know work with child protective services, I had two or three people crying on me a day, like every single day, all the time. If you don't think you get a little jaded after a while, you're insane. You just do. Yeah. So when someone like comes up to me and tells me a story that means a lot to them, but I don't know them, it's impossible for me to click that empathetic emotional thing right there it's not because i'm a sociopath i'm I'm pretty sure i'm far from it from everything i've gathered from other people but it's just it's it's a defense mechanism if i care about you if my if you're a good friend or and someone's crying that i know then i feel it you know i can gravitate towards it i can try and empathize with the person i can try to do what i can but man people got to kind of figure out you know just jumping in straight with that stuff I, I know it's 
you know, they haven't had anyone talk to them about it. But my inbox is just child protective services destroyed my life. Help me. And I'm like, right. What the fuck? Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I can't read your eight month, eight uh, paragraph diatribe yeah. where I don't even know if you're even telling me the truth. Do you feel do you either one of you feel resp- um, like you have some sort of responsibility to at least listen to oh, the people no that come shit, up to you for me, at least? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I <clears throat> and and I do. I have obviously made friends through the show. I mean, that's how we met, yeah. right? You listen to the show. Um, I met Allie because she knew who I was uh, years ago. Uh, Osborne, who's a very good friend of mine, he first wrote to me about the you know me doing the show. So I okay. also lost my voice. I'm sorry. I know we're on uh, live radio. Ah, uh, no worries. It gives it, it, gives, it, it gives a character. Thank you. Yeah, I, it makes I, it makes no, him I, sound emotional right I now. Like this one. <laughs> like, like yeah, choking just, up. Just do it like that the whole time. Don't even don't even fix it with the water. Just rock, rock it just with that. Keep going like this. It's a, <laughs> yeah. No, don't. I, no, I like this. I think we're going somewhere. It's got to not be as fun as uh, uh, Rich Paul, who his fans just want to get high with him all the time. See, that yeah. sounds way. <laughs> that sounds so much better. fudder. Right. You'd yeah. be so high though. <laughs> <laughs> you just grow a tolerance. Like I, I had to grow a tolerance to people crying on me while telling me about them being molested. Rich Paul grew tolerance of smoking weed. Like that to me seems like a way better tolerance. It's more healthy. Hey, if you uh, listeners want to get high with me or Rob anytime, anytime. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. down for that. Don't, don't come crying to us. Come smoking with us. Don't come crying to me. That was that was a, that was a way better segment. Yes, it was. Thanks. Yeah. That was a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Keep it more. Let, let's try and keep it more lighthearted. Yeah. I'll, I'm. We're, we're, we're well, I, I I I know. I know. I yeah. know. I know. You're hard to keep oh, up with. I wanted way. to work in. You, know, you just keep going, man. I'm trying to. Sometimes it's like I'm, I'm, I'm having a mental game of like podcasting. Car- Carlos is the Duracell battery of podcasts. The Energizer. Yeah. Energizer. Is that the one that, with the bunny? Yeah, the Duracell yeah. just sat there. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Duracell, man. <laughs> two After two hours, though, I am dead as uh, I'm fucking dead. I'm yeah. just yeah, laid out. I give up. <laughs> yeah. I give up. Like, we, I've been on your show before where it's like where it goes long, and I just sit there. I'm like, I just, just keep in the game going. Three hours. Too like, damn that's, long. That, that, sh- that podcast is way too long. No, yeah. like, like after two hours on that show, it's suddenly at the end, it's just like Nick talking, and then I'm just sitting there like, I couldn't give a fuck what you have to say. So I'm just going to sit over here. Like, Yeah, they, they, they should have a time limit. No, like I, two hours for this show now, because it's now a two-hour show because of LRM, the but even then the breaks kind of ma- like don't with make with it that bad. drives and stuff, it could be really helpful, man. From like a ridiculously long show. Yeah. With how much I drive, sometimes it's kind of uh, nice. my favorite podcast. I do like it when they're an hour and a half to two hours. My friend does a show called Peace Revolution Podcast. Oh, eighteen hours. Some of them have been eighteen hours long. What? It's not all him talking. Do like though. take they take a nap during the no, show? No, like or? he'll be like, and now here's the audio of an entire movie. He'll he'll like put in a whole like hour and a half of audio. Like he wants every podcast to be like a course in something. Whoa. And he does a very good job. He is amazing. He's fucking we just recorded last week. Um, we recorded three straight hours one day and four hours the next day. And for one show, we recorded seven hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the the next day, uh, we get to the four hour mark. They're still going. I'm like, I can't do anymore. I'm burnt out. I can't talk anymore. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Yeah, yeah, my brain, my brain. Well, talking. like during during the puking the gang, like when I was on there, we I both almost all of us had to take a bathroom break because we literally had to go pee because we've been sitting there for way so long. We were Andrew there for can complain for hours. <laughs> He's amazing at bitching for hours. Yeah, like that is his talent. He's very good at it. And whenever my problem with the show was as soon as we got into something kind of serious and interesting, then puke could just be like. No, no, we gotta click the hits, blah, blah, blah. you know. And I was like, oh, we're finally hitting some fun here. Yeah, I think puke is the. Uh, I think they're all good. No, I like the show. No, I don't like Nick. At all. Uh, I, I like, like. I don't like even hearing his voice. It's fucking. It's like. It's that to me. Oh, uh, I really. I think Nick is really funny. I like him. 
I thought you guys didn't get along. Oh, I thought it was right there. Oh, I ne- oh, did you listen to the? I listened to you on there. Okay. Yeah, I, to I like Nick. He's just. I don't think he likes me. I'm sure. He, well, he, really doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't like me either. He doesn't like most people. Yeah. He doesn't. Well, I he confronted me about, you know, my tattoos. I'm like, coming from the man that's wearing slippers in my studio. Wait, he was in here. Yeah, they came here um, the week after. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And like he he was I don't know if he was trying to make fun of had tattoos or whatnot. Like he he brought it up and then I'm like, would well, you want to know more about him? Then it was like literally like this ten minutes. We open up for like ten minutes. Whether or not we're gonna talk about it. Did you guys record? Yeah. For like bonus. That was content? their bo- That was their bonus content. But I don't believe in IP, so I threw it up on my YouTube channel. Yeah. It's on the YouTube channel for uh, Rebel Love Show. So oh, it's cool. YouTube.com slash Rebel Love. I am going to throw that up as a podcast, um, but I'm saving it for bonus content probably this week. Cool. You guys do bonus, bonus content for your show? I always do bonus mm-hmm. content, at least once a week, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing for your show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. We are broadcasting from Manchester, New Hampshire on LRN.FM. And in studio today, we have uh, Brett and Carlos. And Brett, we did some, about what, a month ago? Um, yeah, yeah, about a month. month about a month ago. We did some long. outreach for you. We took some of your flyers. and We went, we went to the government's, uh, you know, facility that has our... The, the young minds of the America. Yeah, Manchester West High School. And yeah. hand, and handed them some of your flyers. I saw the video of it, and <laughs> I was really appreciative. Those flyers have been collecting dust for years. Seven boxes. Yeah. There are seven yeah. boxes at the, the queue, and that's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for doing that. I've been it, wanting to hand them out since I uh, first saw him. <laughs> he, he's been talking about it for I've been talking about this like for like three months, months and months. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel like it went? How did you feel like the reception was from the kids? Th- they loved him. For oh, a, cool. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. It, well, we, there's a couple of people that came in, uh, that bypassed us. They they thought we were you know crazy people handing if out. If you're something. handing out something, if you've if you're not at work and you're got a uh, something to hand out or you're holding a sign, mm-hmm. uh, you're nuts. Yeah. I mean, what else? Would, what else would you be? <laughs> yeah. A lot you know? of people. Yeah, a lot of people just hate activists in general. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of because one of the lessons of school is, uh, you know, well, two of the lessons of school are conformity and apathy. If, if somebody has a cause, they're insane, mm-hmm. you know? Like, why would you care about something? Yeah. You should be at work. No, so, absolu- absolutely. I mean, that's a message that they get there, I think. Mm-hmm. No, I, I definitely get that. And uh, just doing that, because it's so out of the norm. Yeah. I, I, I get a rush whenever I do any kind of activism like that. Like, I feel like I don't want to get arrested or anything. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm not going to go down that whole route. Uh, but whenever I confront the system in which we disagree with, especially just doing that, and that's not something I always want to do. I just, I just wanted to do it at least a couple times at that time. Um, I feel like I'm literally standing up against like what I know shouldn't exist. That building shouldn't exist. Those kids shouldn't be in there. They're pretty much a prisoner of the state basically for, you know, eight hours of the day being taught something that I don't believe in. Yeah. And there I am like trying to give them propaganda to not learn what they're learning, you know, and that sounds. Uh, well, yeah, like what I said earlier today um, to someone at a YAL meeting was I'm not against the education part of it. I'm against the mandatory part of it, like the fact that they have to be the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Yeah. And then people have to pay for it, even if they don't use it. They have well, to no, pay they're for not school. paying for it. It's it's stolen from me. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, but. yeah. Uh, having watched the video, though, of us doing that, do you think there's anything we could have done better? Or, uh, no, I see. I I wasn't able when all that stuff was printed. I was actually running a tutoring company, and we were trying to move into Manchester mm-hmm. at the very schools that you know people were telling us, you know, go hand this stuff out at. In fact, <laughs> we started in Portsmouth. Um, the the guy who was my webmaster at the time, we started in Portsmouth, and they were in coffee shops, and this was like the center of our business. Like I was working at Portsmouth High School. You know, I was tutoring at the Portsmouth Library. Like, all my clients were out in that area. And this school sucks literature is everywhere, too. And then that story happened where they, the bookshelves uh, fell over in the library. 
and it wound up on the front page of the uh, Foster's Daily Democrat newspaper, like 30,000 circulation. It was a front page, school sucks. And I'm just like, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before I'm out of business. But uh, they never connected me to didn't school you, sucks. Well, didn't you end up going on some like Democrat talk radio show talking about it or something like that? No, that no, no, that never came to fruition. That was going to be in Keene. Oh, okay. So oh, wait, unless I'm forgetting, you're gonna go full Keen. No. <laughs> I didn't. I had not realized you started uh, School Sucks uh, while still working at school. Uh, well, I wasn't working at the school. I was working in the school as like we. I would run a SAT class. It was all private. They just like they mm-hmm. they were all Portsmouth High School students, so they let us use the school because I had like 14, 15 kids. It, it was like a lot of tutoring companies, and this is what ultimately made it you know very difficult to continue is that the the tutoring companies would go in they just make a deal with the school like if you can get 50 kids we'll give the class for 50 bucks a kid and i didn't really want to work that way you know i hear you so um we were basically run out of town by this company called revolution ironically they basically took (laughs) over tutoring in new england and i was i was done with it by i was tutoring until a year ago like it was only a year ago that i kind of gave up work for the show okay so yeah. yeah, I didn't know how long you did tutoring. Another uh, seven years. Another activism that I want to do on a campus. So this would be on college campuses. Is uh, the 420 uh, rally that's going on in Concord? I want to hand out flyers for that. That's yeah. a fucking layup. <laughs> 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 that's yeah, not exactly controversial. It'd be hey, you guys easy. like weed? We do too. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. Yeah, it's like worst case scenarios. That just, no, you just someone tells if us if you want to go like controversial about it, like pass out a thing that just says like make cocaine legal. Whoa, because wow. then it ter- kind of turns into like I'm okay with marijuana, but I don't know about this cocaine stuff. Then I'll act like Carlos all the time, and <laughs> oh, that's just annoying. Carlos, that's your next topic. That's it. We'll do. We'll cocaine? start the cocaine uh, on the state house lawn day and we'll do that after the 420 rally and then mm-hmm. i'll have a heart attack yeah. right afterwards sounds like a fucking great time let's bring in like mountains of cocaine and just like snort we'll have no what we'll do is we'll get like like a a bunch of those uh, little portable tables maybe like a yeah. hundred foot table and then just do one long line across the entire <laughs> thing and i just try to snort as much as i like can before my heart marathon. stops <laughs> yeah. Cocaine races. You have cocaine oh, races. <laughs> there you go. Great name for it. No, and uh, we can do different ki- kinds of powders. Though we could have like ketamine as one of them too, oh, until like man. the person just completely passes out and just sees lights everywhere. Ketamine. Oh, yeah. That's like is that not like horse tranquilizer? Yeah. yeah if you're gonna be an activist, be an activist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna do drugs, do cool drugs. Don't just step the up, weed. Shire, dude. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's just yeah. boring. <laughs> If you're gonna go out uh, and do it, then you should you know, know. do drugs hard. A weed, how brave! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> really standing up to the man by smoking weed. That's a good sign of the well, times. Well, it is a good way to uh, reach out to uh, locals about liberty, though, because who doesn't like weed? Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, that's a good way for people to think. Oh yeah, liberty guys, those are the potheads. The Despite potheads. what some people say, public relations, good press, it's got to be a factor in what you're doing. Yeah, it really does. You know? So you don't think it's good, you think it's good pr- uh, press or bad press? Well, you have that. to think about what enemies have you made, what kind of influence do they have in the area you're trying to influence, and what is going to be their response? You know, especially if they have the press on their side. You know, so you can wind up, I think, working against yourselves if you're not careful. And we don't we don't have that problem in Manchester like they do in Keene. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But. You know, I mean, uh, th- th- even the most um, dedicated activists out there will tell you that it's a poison well, you know, as far as, like, public perception in that town. And Keene is really just, I think, a stage for more of a national audience. Yeah. Like, you'd be insane to think you're going to win over Keene. It's a, it's a totally liberal, you know. Uh, I mean, the college, forget it. You know. Yeah, keen is for debating. Manchester's for arguing because the, the, the <laughs> debate. Well, I'm I'm not kidding. So a debate is for other people. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because if it's actually just you and another person, it's just two, and you're debating, but there's no audience. You're just throwing poop at each other and you're just waiting for uh, something. Yeah, to debate. There's no growth. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no. There's well. There's yeah. growth for people outside though. And that's great. Uh-huh. Uh But the argument, which for some reason people who don't go to college have a bad. And, thought in regards to argument is just trying to win the other person over to your to your side but you're both having open mind to it so and manchester has that ability you have that ability here because you haven't sh- you know no one's run around and shit all over it so what do you, would you guys like to see happen in manchester i'm fine with what's happening here right now and what is that you know we're all just living our lives we're making friends we're producing media 
you know, what, what do you what, what what do you feel? What would you like to see? I mean, like let's kind of let's try to meet in the middle here. What would I like to see? Yeah, yeah. In Manchester, yeah. I would like to see more people. I mean, I know a lot of people do make media and whatnot. I would like to see more local outreach in some way uh, to build ties with people that are locals here. I would, I would like to see more of that, but I don't think it necessarily has to be around ex- explicitly around liberty. Yeah. You know, like being more community oriented, people s- working together to solve problems. Yeah. Like that's liberty in action. You don't have to throw it in anyone's face. Exactly. More Rebel Love Show coming up. Yeah, the coke the coke race would get faster and faster as the guy ran. Academy <laughs> <laughs> race, the guy would just fall over. <laughs> Blah. Like that one movie. Have you ever seen um, In Bruges? Fucking loved In Bruges. That was a great movie, was right? A great movie with no. fucking uh, Dinklage. Yeah, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, <laughs> race war. <laughs> <laughs> and he Races was on cokehead midget. Yeah, he walked by his own ketamine. He was just like, Bleh. yeah. I thought that movie was really entertaining, and I really like that great. one. Uh, have you seen Seven Psychopaths? Yes, yeah, it's a fucking that great. That film. Main, same yeah, main nice character. I've not Bruce. seen that yet. Great stuff. Mm. I loved Chris Watkins, Christopher Watkins oh, in yeah, Seven yeah. Psychopaths, because he's like super anti-government. Because yeah. he's Amish. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, um, yeah. There's some really good like Chris Walken quotes from that movie. He's very funny. Mm-hmm. He kind of understood eventually that he was silly and embraced mm-hmm. it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and and so did the uh, writers for him. Uh, because they were mad that he would not uh, pronounce the places where he's supposed to. So in his scripts, there are no periods, commas, or any other markings. It's just words. <laughs> like really? That's how all of his scripts are. He's write the whole thing up that's for funny. him with nothing there. Because he's like, no, I don't need that. Because it just runs on into the... I, I make the parts where I want to make them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, but scripts are great. He punctuates by yelling and then whispering. Yeah. <laughs> Walking accents. Sometimes I scream. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. It was like a Spanish twist. My friend Paul Verge is so good at, at Christopher Walken. It's the hardest one. No, it's not. It's I think it's kind of a hack impression. Mm. I think it's like a Sean Connery. Like no, ever, kind of, people fuck up Sean Connery though on a constant basis. They but try. people get it. They you, know have to do, it. you just have to do the whistle on the S's and like just kind of make it gruff in the speed. Yes. Snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sausages. Rats. <laughs> German shepherds. You yes. do a good job on the whistle, by the way. <laughs> that is good. I can't yeah. do that. You just sound, well, you sound like an old attached. perverted man whenever you're doing the, yes. on the whistle. Where's well, the little paper boy? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hmm. I know. Well, if, if movies come up on the show, they are making a fucking NWA movie. Like with actors, I saw really? yeah, I saw a trailer for that. Um, the trailer, straight out of Compton, straight out of Compton. It's called Straight Out of Compton, the movie. It looks awesome. It's a, it's you know like a it's people. a it's like a feature film. Yeah. Um, Paul Giamatti plays um, Jerry Heller. Okay. You know the story, like yeah. Easy Allied with the yeah. ruthless ruthless records guy Jerry Heller. So Paul so Giamatti. Paul Giamatti's in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the rest of it, it's it was you know a bunch of kids I didn't know who they were. I the, but guy who plays Easy E looks like Easy E. The guy who plays Ice Cube, a little lighter skin, but looks like Ice Cube. The guy who plays uh, I didn't see MC Ren though, but it looks really good. It like, does look. Good. When's that supposed to come out? I don't know. And it's so weird to be like I remember, like I started. No, actually, when I started listening to rap, it was like right when the Chronic came out. So it was like right after NWA broke up. So see, I'm more excited about the idea of. If this coming forward, if it's good, to finally make a Kurt Cobain movie that doesn't suck. Oh. Because you have a really interesting story there. Mm-hmm. But the stuff that's been produced before, they couldn't even use his name. Really? Like, have you ever seen The Last Days? It's mm-hmm. the last two weeks of his life before he kills himself, but they never use the word Kurt. And it's just basically, it's like an artistic film. It's mostly just Kurt walking around going, and like wearing a dress. <laughs> and he shoots himself. Huh. But um, and then Kurt loves Courtney. I watched when I was like nine. 
which fucked up my whole brain because it's about Courtney Love killing Kurt Cobain and like it interviews all these people who knew Courtney Love. Mm-hmm. When you're nine years old, that's not a good thing to watch on VHS. right before the break was activism in Manchester and uh, one thing I kind of curious what you guys think of anyone chime in where do you um, see uh, activism in Manchester New Hampshire in general going in say the next year or so I don't know I have no idea that's, a, that's your that's yeah your guys I'd like territory. to hear more about what you guys think on an unrelated note I really feel like we should maybe be freestyling over those bumpers uh, <laughs> you know what the next bumper <laughs> just go to town just go tell the next bumper. Yeah, so I would no, love to hear that. On the that, that would be like a that's commercial worthy. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you do some callouts? Would you do some call Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can okay. do callouts. Yeah. Okay. I got a lot of really fun Creative Commons uh, bumpers on there. Uh, they're, yeah, they're all at uh actually if you want to look up the music, well I'll put them on the Rebel Love Show website eventually, but you can go to freemusicarchive.org. That's where I got them all from. There's some really good Creative Commons. I do there. love the bumpers on this show yeah. so far. Yeah, they, I'm definitely feeling them. They're fun. I gotta add some more though. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, anyways, on where we see, uh, yeah, yeah, and whatnot. I don't know. Well, there's a like, huge influx of activists coming to Manchester. Like even just since I got here. I don't. I always thought like since I started doing the show, like I never really thought I had any leverage face to face compared to being able to reach people all over the world Mm -hmm. you know Hmm. like going and handing things out i mean like i remember like going and we would put we'd staple up those things that you guys were handing out just like driving around manchester and stapling them to telephone poles Uh uh-huh and not really knowing the neighborhoods we were in or, you know, is this our demographic? Is Maple Street our demographic? <laughs> like, it just didn't seem like... Set pine. Yeah, a great use of our of our time compared to... It, it wasn't, you know, high um, return work yeah. to actually hit the street and try to talk to people one-on-one because you have no idea who those people are. I mean, you have such better tools online because you can establish a niche like i said before you can draw people in you can market to them they can in turn leverage it further you know if they're enthusiastic about it they can share it on i mean that's just not possible uh and it's amazing the activism that was done in this country you know 40 50 years ago without any of those tools so it's possible it can work um i would say you know even though there weren't really great long-term changes from any of that but it probably you know it did stop a war that's very true. So, um, like, well, at the same time, you're talking about online being better than in person, which I agree with uh, to an extent. But I moved here from California, you know. Like, I'm not gonna just be online. Like, there's got to be some more something to do. Face. Was, that well, always seemed like more of a social thing yeah. to me. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing more what you guys. Well, I mean, uh, well, I think that there's a. Uh, there's a role that everyone plays. Sure. Like if it's just doing media, I, that's something. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's a lot because it, it uh, changes people's minds. It uh, gets people to move. It does a lot of things. And it, it forces them uh, mentally to wake up and do something for themselves. So I, I'm not uh, judge anyone that does anything, period. Uh, I would like to see more outreach, though, community-wise. I would like to see us build more community uh uh, outreach to more people in the community here to not just like the Liberty community, but like actually people, you know, natives uh, to wake them up and have more people, you know, more supporters of activists coming here. Maybe change the image of what it is to be a free state. Cause I know I don't even want to like so come out of work a bunch as a free state. FSP banners all over duck and donuts. Maybe because <laughs> everyone in New Hampshire goes there. That's right. true. So I think we're Hit killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. So we should do outreach at Dunkin' Donuts. We do yeah. cross promotion. Cross promotion. We, we do Carlos Confronts America. Yeah. And then when he's finished yelling at somebody, he <laughs> says freestateproject.org. <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> That's brilliant. We need uh, more. We need and then more. Then we uh, have a gun around. <laughs> that means really to turn it yeah. keen. Make it open carry. You know, just like muzzle swipe a bunch of people. And then we'll all trash. do a trash pickup after that outside the Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. And as long as there's a trash pickup at the end of your activism or during, you're good. You're We're good to go. As and long as you clean it. And as long as you film it, yeah. yeah you to, you need to have at least three wearable cameras. Put the trash in a pile. 
cover it in gasoline, shoot it with a gun like they do in the movie, <laughs> and then light a joint in the fire. <laughs> You would be such an amazing activist. Great. I'll meet yeah, you guys at the freedom. ketamine rally after I think that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we need more. You know what we need more of as far as activism goes? We need more Tinder activism from Rob Mathias. I do enough Tinder activism <laughs> as it is. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was working in Asheville how um, there was a few representatives of the BRLP. We were all on OK Cupid because uh-huh. we were all trying to find people. And there was a bunch of guys who were like, oh, man, I totally got this girl to become an anarchist, you know, like right before I had sex with her. <laughs> and I was like, no, she was just saying whatever it is and just agreeing with you in order to have sex with her. And like kind of contextualizing that as as doing activism for the movement <laughs> was just like fucking your way to liberty. I if she's, if she screams Murray Rothbard Derrick, then that's a success in yeah, my book. Yeah, I think that's absolutely successful. Yeah. I think a lot of us delusion ourselves, <laughs> with, though, with that. Like, I, I started thinking in my mind every single girl that I was dating, she was like, oh, she really got it. She's like an anarchist now. Then afterwards, you kind of realize the fact she was just saying. Well, Anne, yeah, Anne, I, Anne I was pretty so. close to uh, to that as it was when I met her, but uh, she signed a move, so. Well, so, yeah. You True. You certainly, certainly had yeah. a definite change there. Uh, one so girl I dated for, like, uh, three and a half years she was like she went full anarchist with me and everything same time and now she works for a congressman in san antonio who's pro drug war so that obviously didn't work out uh, so well maybe I it's because yeah. the breakup was so bad that she, she hated was, all anarchists she was like, because of you anarchist carlos sucks wow. i um, yeah. dated a girl for two years and um you know very peaceful breakup friends were still you know still friendly today mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, her father was like a real conservative guy, but very inquisitive, very open minded. I I gave him like the little card with the quiz on it. He came up libertarian like most people will. Uh, And, you know, like she was into it at first, like uh, she would come with me when I would tutor. And I was we listen to Free Talk Live on the way. This was like, you know, 2008. And she would like research libertarianism while I was working. And it was very it would seem very magical. But then it seemed like six months in as I got more serious. And like when I started the show, she just seemed annoyed by it and wasn't really committed. And then we talked a couple of years after we broke up. And she's like, yeah, my dad's going to pay me to vote for Mitt Romney. So I'm going to do it. Oh, I would. Wow. And I'm like, wow, it's like I never even existed. Yeah. You know, your dad but- thinks uh, your dad, who I logged hours talking to, thinks getting Mitt Romney elected is so important. He's going to pay you and you're going to do it. It was very disappointing. Do you think dating status uh, for makes them uh, less liberty because they get so annoyed at most liberty people <laughs> that they're going to hate it? Well, I didn't really know how to live it. Because we're all crazy. You know, like when I was when when it was new to me. I mean, I met this girl in 2008. Right. So I was pretty new to this then, and I was very passionate and very angry, and I liked to yell at other people and make them feel bad about how stupid they were for voting and paying their taxes, and that can wear a person down. I That's think. exhausting. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Telling I, them why they I, can't have the you know fire department. I do find <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I I mean, essentially in, in that standpoint, though, I couldn't date someone though. Who was like a full on statist? Yeah, yeah. I, I I gave it a shot and I, I dated this girl for like a year and I j- we we didn't respect each other at all because our viewpoints were so diametrically opposed. She like wanted a new world order. She was like, no, I think a one world government would be a great idea. Wow, like it'd be more, it'd be more it, you have to have some common ground. Yeah, you know, well, our common ground is the fact that we're both atheists at least. Like okay. dating a religious person would be impossible for me. Yeah, I'm no, way too I, much of an I, asshole I can, to I can be able to deal with that. that. I can imagine that. Yeah. Though one thing, um, you're talking about like uh, how you you yelled at people all the time and stuff like that. You don't do that now, though, right? No, no, no. Yeah, no. why why don't you do that now? Well, I've learned some things. I would think over the years, but okay. I mean, when when you're new to this stuff, you're angry about it because people lied to you your whole life. Yeah, yeah. I, I do find though living here, I have chilled. Yeah, I have I have chilled out so much. Uh, maybe it's all the pot. I don't know, but uh, I I don't I'm not angry that much anymore. I hasn't chilled out any of the people on Keen, so I don't think that's I don't working get that. for that. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm chilled out. I don't uh, unless they're actually unless there's a bureaucrat right in front of me, then it's a little bit different. But it, I used it's, to like it's the culture though. The Manchester culture isn't. I mean, for the Man- Manchester Free State culture hasn't, from what I've seen, been one where it seems logical to go yell at meter maids. I, I think part of it, too, is being able to, to you, you li- live a more serene life if you recognize what your sphere of control is, you know? Yeah. And if you're always operating outside of your sphere of control, like trying to tell government employees why they're bad, it, it just seems like 
it's not empowering, you know. It's not you're not going to feel effective that way if you're just always focused away from yourself and on things that you're honestly, hey, sorry, you're never going to change. Yeah, like waking up every morning and thinking, now, okay, today I got to change the minds of you know ten people. Like you're going to have a bad day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the only thing that's going to make you happy. Like that's that's not the way to go. No. So uh, here's Rebel Up Show. Chill out, relax, smoke a joint, and then we smack. It. So when we come back. Feel free to freestyle, guys. This is more like a blues. Yeah, you can't really do it over this. You know what? Yeah. Look at the bass a little. Ah, uh, I got this. Wait, just just a second. Turn the bass up a little more. Wait, yeah. That's <laughs> every rap track. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good uh, good hour. Oh man. So, so is it like a five or ten minute break eight. now? Or something? Uh, eight something like that, yeah. Well, can we do the thing where we go around the table and introduce ourselves because the hour's over? Yeah, we'll I do that again. That. We'll do that again. Sure. What do you guys want to talk for about for the next hour? I don't care. We, 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 we're doing great. Yeah. I got, a, I got a question for you. You guys got anything with sugar in it? No sugar glue. Mm. Like, even if it's just... Yeah, there's grape soda. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really hard. No. I'm glad you said no, it. Man. No, if it was orange soda, it'd be different. You know, grape soda is. <laughs> no, it's it is, orange. It is grape. It's it was just Ke- it was just Keenan, who uh, uh, Kel, Kel, yeah. who oh. liked orange soda. That was it. Yeah. It's because it would have been too racist if the whole show was. Grape Black soda. guy loves grape soda. Yeah, they had to change too the much. They had to make it a different fruit. They had to make it a different fruit because otherwise it's racist. Yeah. It's, well, it's just, anyways, make a grape soda. It's not racist. It spins around. Do you think we have enough time to make coffee? Oh, that's why it's lazy. You don't have to go over the other side. No, Susan, the woman, was yeah. la- was she like getting plowed? So she was, wow. she, she was I, laying on the seat. What? My goodness. <laughs> 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 just like I don't I don't see. I mean, that's pretty much all that's going on. Oh, we still got to talk, talk about, about ISFLC, ISFLC yet. Yeah. yeah. We got to talk about ISFLC. Yeah. Um, on the, in the chat, did Brett say that anti-war activists stopped the Vietnam War? Didn't that war go on for over a decade and only ended when the U.S. failed? No, it didn't go over a decade. Only the last war, Iraq war. I, uh, they didn't. Are I, I we misspoke. talking about Vietnam? I misspoke. I would say they they had an influence. They had an influence. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's your answer. You say, I was wrong. I was wrong. Michael Bean said. I was wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. I know you guys can't. You guys on the YouTube stream can't hear the uh, bumpers, which is something we still gotta fix. We need. Do we need uh, like more gear for that? Hey, how would you we get LRN's feed to go into our? Because um, we're not rec- uh, recording uh, through cause through uh, Audacity and Wirecast. It's recording this, but it's not recording the feed from LRN, and we want that feed so we get the bumpers. Well, you could add them in after, but it's also. I know. Well, that's what we have to do now. So right now, in, in post production, I'm gonna add. I'll throw in the bumpers, but I want that in the whole feed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You'd have to have it piped through the mixer. So yeah, but how do I do run, that? You'd have to run. Um, what do you need in the laptop? You'd have to run uh, out of your headphone jack in that computer. You'd have to run into the mixer and then have the mixer go into the USB. So you, you'd go into your fifth channel in the okay. mixer, out of your headphone jack, and then you'd have to have it set up as like a... Um, I have a, uh, a USB sound card. Should I not use that or just use the audio jack? No, you, you, have to, you have to run analog. But here's the thing. The, the feed right now is coming through your headphones, mm-hmm. that, which are hooked up to the mixer. Like this is already coming through. It's just not recording. It's coming out through the mixer, not... Yeah. Not back into the mixer. No, it's coming through the mixer via the USB. Like, LRN's feed uh, is coming in through the mixer, then out through uh, the amplifier into your headset. I'd have to look at your setup, but yeah. I'm not sure. But I don't know how to get... But it's not recording that feed coming in. And I don't know how to get that to record. i got to figure that one out. It's running through the mixer. What channel is it running into in the mixer? There is no... It's a USB mixer. It's yeah, coming so in via USB. USB. It's recording into the computer through USB, right? 
Yes. Okay. And the feed's coming in via USB. From what? LRN. The feed is going in your headphones right now. How? It's a USB mixer. Oh, so the feed's not going through the mixer, right? The feed is going through the mixer, but it's not it's not going out from the mixer. Okay. Like it's like it, that's it must be running into a channel on the mixer if we can hear it. Okay. Podcast hacking. Interesting. Are there any aside from all these four mics are XLR, right? Mm -hmm. So what yeah. else is plugged into what else is inputting into the mixer? Just the USB cable. No, it's coming out of the mixer. USB comes out of the mixer and into the computer. Yeah, that's all that's hooked up to the computer is the USB cable. I don't fucking get it. I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how There's that's possible. A, how we're getting the feed right now through this? How how we can hear the feed? Was that? Yeah, it's a, it's a. Yeah, you can have communications both ways via the USB cable. Yeah. Not. That, the, the then how? Then how do can you? Look at this computer. Look at this. There's nothing behind it. This is the mixer. No, the mixer is uh, this cable right there. That's the mixer. That's the only interface between. That's the only interface with the com with the uh, computer. And you're getting put your headphones on. That's the mm -hmm. Alaron feed. Which is on the computer. Yeah. Fucking baffled. Well, that's why I, I mean, I, I'm always trying to uh, teach myself uh, new things in regard to podcasting, and this is stumping me how to get this feed to record. I've thought about, po I have a uh, USB um, uh, uh, sound card that I can output to this instead of, just, instead of using USB, like actually on the input, which I don't, I think it may be redundant. If it's coming through the, the mixer now, I should just be able to record it. Right? Yeah. So why isn't this come going out? I don't... Uh, first of all, what, what, whatever is happening here is a mystery to me. So what, if you want it into your main mix, that is... Like, so you're recording through what, Audacity? Actually, I, don't have, I forgot to run Audacity. I'm just doing it via Wirecast at the moment. What is Wirecast? It's an app for recording the video. Okay. I forgot to get audio, Audacity up and it running. Audio too, right? Yeah, it has audio. Yeah. I mean, the audio is going on right now. Audio. Yeah, I know. So does it tell you what your input is? What? Does, it, does Wirecast tell you what the input is to record? Yeah. So it says, like, USB? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would just run the LRN. Back to the Rebel Love Show. We are broadcasting live on LRN.FM from the Rebel Love Studios in Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. I am Rob Mathias. I'm Shire, dude. I am Carlos Morales. <laughs> I'm Brett Vinat. All right, and we are back from on the top of the hour here. And uh, during the break, we were talking about podcasting 101, and uh, I still kind of want to continue that conversation because I'm baffled as well. In regards to yeah, what's going on Rob's here. mixer is like held together with bubble gum and duct tape. Yeah, we're we're poor <laughs> activists here, people. <laughs> He's using one laptop to do everything, which yeah. is already we kind really of should get a second one. Idea. So if you want to help us out, send us some Bitcoin so we can get another <laughs> computer going and get this show properly going. But if you're watching this live at uh, rebelloveshow dot com slash watch, I apologize. The bumpers and LRN feed are not coming in for you, so we'll get that hopefully fixed by next week, so you get the full experience of the rebel love show this is a teaching hospital so it is i'm a i'm hospital. very i i'm very confused as to how you're yeah it's a behringer yeah. mixer it's just uh, a usb mixer plugged into the laptop did the insane clown posse mention podcasting in the song miracles yes by any chance was that part of their lyrics yeah i believe so right after magnets <laughs> yeah. who understands those it's Why a fucking is, miracle how the icp is huge work? in new hampshire man there's jugglers left and right what this is yeah, this is Seriously, there's jugglers in Keene and the Lakes region, a lot of them. Yeah, Graham yeah. was a juggler, yeah. wasn't he? Yep, Graham was a juggler. Yeah. Well, former. There's a lot of silly things in the Free State Project. I don't understand it. Like, yeah. religious people. 
It's crazy. Like, but no, I, I had to work up in the Lakes region for a long period of time, and there's like a, at least half the clients, not half the clientele, but about 15% of them were juggalos. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw a documentary about like a ICP event once, and I just figured it would be everybody getting murdered, but uh, it was- I like, would put the juggalo population probably on par with the FSB population. Really? I'm sure. Maybe they, maybe that's a stretch, but there's from what I can tell. Aren't they violent? Decent, yes. So how many? Because uh, we've t- we talked about also about the poly population in oh, Manchester. Oh yeah, the poly especially. population blows all those out of the water by like how, tenfold. How many uh, polyamorous free state or juggalos do you think there are in Manchester? <sighs> Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. That's right. <laughs> there's probably at least a handful of them. They're involved with the ketamine races as well. So <laughs> yeah, that that should start up. It would end fast. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be a good way to get rid of all the oh, juggalos. I think we're good. They want to know about your. They're talking about you in the chat. Which, by the way, if you go to rebelosha.com slash watch, oh, we also have the LRN chat room uh, available for you there. They're, they're asking about your Tinder activism, Rob. They want to know about my Tinder activism. Yeah. Go on Tinder, get a date, and then uh, be true to yourself and uh, be. Uh, what's what I'm looking for? <laughs> um, be you and own it, and. Uh, while you're at it, talk about liberty if you really want to. And I wear a condom and <laughs> a don't condom. have inappropriate babies with individuals and then, you know, don't raise them and say they're like liberated babies and they're being unschooled <laughs> by make being it unparented. Sound, make it sound cool. You know, don't, uh, if you're going to be a, you know, who you are, be cool. Don't be, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like, like a poverty stricken activist who goes, well, I would have made money if there was a free market. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's never cool. You know, be confident, be cool with yourself. Don't, uh, you know, I don't know. That's, that's you know, I would have made money if there was a free market. If there was no <laughs> school. Yeah, no, right. I, I, and, I, and I get that. But what I'm talking about is like, I don't know, living in your mother's basement by the time you're 35. and it, As right as you may be, you know, in regards to what you're saying, maybe don't you, come, don't come out, still don't come out the now. bat swinging. You know? I also yeah. did. I, I also, well, uh, well, that's a separate story. I say you take him to Dunkin' Donuts, you sit him down, and you say, I'm so angry at the government. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you open. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, new the show parties. ideas. You yeah. know, I actually had a new show idea where um, I go out and I just cop block, and so the entire thing is just live streamed, like a live stream show. So it's like maybe like a couple of guys talking to each other out just cop blocking regularly so like they're listening to the scanner maybe driving around seeing what's going on in the city although the only problem with that is it could be really boring because well the, there the could the be no cops on, that night well you know? the people on the show had to be entertaining yeah yeah so, so you, you just, have to have you get the right guests yeah good dialogue with each other dr- throughout the uh entire yeah. so, so it'd have one thing that a lot of shows don't have which is there's no table right we're out walking right like yeah. doing stuff you're on the beat it's handheld cameras yeah you yeah. call it cops blocked <laughs> cops <laughs> blocked oh yeah i like that That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. You guys have any shows you maybe wanted to start it but never never got around to? Yeah, I talked about one last time I was here. The, yeah, uh, the, the ice cream yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Nut Scream? Is that it? Uh, Primal the, Scream. Primal Scream. Was uh, one of the recipes. The podcast was kind of Healthy Guys, which, yeah. Yeah, which we could also kind of have a, I guess we could put some Liberty branding to that. Um, but that's something I'd like to do eventually. Yeah, I'm restarting up an old podcast I was doing because I got sick of doing the Truth Over Comfort one, so I'm okay. actually starting up something in the next two weeks. What's that? Uh, I the first podcast I did was called the Renegade Variety Hours with a really good friend of mine, a girl named Taryn. Okay, and we did that for a couple months, and it was it was great. And then you know I moved out of San Antonio, so it was hard to do it through Google Hangout and everything else. I hate Google Hangout shows. Uh, I know Google I know. Hangout and Skype shows like I can't stand them. But the thing the thing about uh, Taryn is that she's smart and and quite attractive. So to not use video mm. would be absolutely ridiculous. Well, it'd be ridiculous not to use video regardless. Yeah. Exactly. So we're gonna we're gonna see if we can work it out with Fiend Phone, maybe some kind of video recording on top of it. Uh, but essentially, it, we're gonna start up the Renegade Variety R again. Th- the show is more geared, not necessarily just towards the Liberty stuff. It's it's more so the liberation of the mind. Okay. Not just the physical. So we're talking about uh, philosophical ideas, also just lifestyle, um, whether that be health or the topic of, of logic and removing yourself away from dogmas that are ruining people's lives. Uh, and Stefan Katsella already agreed to, to end up do a bunch of the shows with us. Oh, that's awesome. So, and Stefan Katsella is, to me, the coolest of all the uh, libertarian celebritarians because he's the most like rational out of all of them. He's mm-hmm. great, yeah. yeah. He's great. He calls out people for when they're being overly silly or overly dramatic. Um, his understanding of science is great. So it's it's the, he has that r- right amount of balance of uh, of, of understanding. How often are you going to put out content? 
You have to be regular with it. Yeah, uh, once every two weeks two is weeks. what we're going to shoot for. Okay. And, That's and, and not bad for starting off. No. You, you mentioned his understanding of science. Now, you guys, you came in and you were talking about something with science, but I didn't quite catch it. Well, I mean, Brett is doing a show right now in regards to sign, uh, scientific consensus. Yeah. Tell science. Me. We're doing a, like a, a series, scientific consensus, which is kind of a, a misunderstood term versus scientific dissent. And mm-hmm. we're trying to see if we can bridge the gap between those two camps. So... Uh, go ahead, you made a face. So go what? ahead and put some words to the face you made. It's fine. <laughs> no. no. It's okay. Not at all. It's okay. Um so one of the uh the, the the person that you have on your show with you. Yeah. Um Daryl, uh he doesn't enjoy reading some against the mainstream ideas. Like, I don't know, there's no tie between, you know, HIV and AIDS. The vaccinations cause, I don't know, everything that is bad. In the world, but don't put that on Daryl. I mean, no, I won't. Y- you know, I won't. Okay, I will put needles into people though, then say call that healing. So, acupuncture. I haven't studied it. Okay, and uh, and I mean those those are some different ideas. But but my my problem is, is that whenever people go, well, you know, doctors are wrong about this one thing. Therefore, let's throw out most of all of science out of the fucking window and go, yeah, but all, so all this kooky stuff is true. What but who does that? That seems like really no, there, irresponsible. There, there's people in the community Natural that news. do. Naturalnews.com, all, Jesus Christ, how many alt-medicine terrible websites are there out there that are just, well, you know, s- skeptics uh, were wrong about this one thing, but let me show you how, let me blow the cap off everything else you've ever known. So, but I think this this very quick. There's a lot of emotion. There's this, a lot of emotion, which, here. which yeah. is one yeah. of the things that we're trying to deal with in this series. Yeah. And the the guy who's been on the show with me, Daryl, yeah. he's pretty good at this. You know, he's pretty. He, he's, a, he's a good communicator. He's a I great think. communicator. He's a much better communicator than I'm uh, at this, obviously. Right. Carlos is a much funnier, funnier <laughs> communicator. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm much more silly. But uh, no, no, no. I mean it in a good way. Carlos, Carlos is entertaining when we talk about this subject. Like we were talking about it last night at dinner, and I was like, we should be recording this. This is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, but there's, so there's a lot of emotion, but it's not always fun and fu- and happy times. Uh, you know, uh, fun emotion. It can be uh, quite well, uh, contentious. So here, here's here's my problem with some of the people who are supposedly skeptical of scientific consensus and everything else. They'll just kind of drop out things like, oh, maybe there's not uh, a tie between HIV and AIDS, and they go, I'm just bringing up questions. I'm just bringing up questions. Some of those <laughs> questions are retarded, and if you put too much of that out there. It makes it sound like they're in any way valid, and that can lead to a lot of deaths. I want to well, continue this conversation after Carlos uh, drops some beats to this. <laughs> Pick up the bass. What? One, two. You're doing great. Yeah. What? Due to the uh, army, that's a good way to tie it all together. Anti-state thing, yeah. Science stuff, put it all in there. The best part about that is um, they actually can't hear the bumpers on the YouTube feed. So, so it's just you like sing. a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I, I, I got too much into that. <laughs> like, and I can't see you. I gotta do this correctly. Cause I'm like turning my head while I'm trying to do it, and it's harder to mm-hmm. the connection. I gotta clean that up. Um, I, I went way, way too harsh. That was bad. What on, on poor Daryl? Yeah, I was. That was that was that was overkill. I thought you were talking about Daryl Perry for a second. No, Daryl mm. Becker and Daryl from Walking Dead. Uh, the the problem is, is he like, still alive? Like, I actually respect yeah, the guy. Oh damn! This is probably is being recorded and, down here. Oh, I, mean, I respect oh, the dude. It, it, and it's I've out of the respect three. that I get really annoyed. I only watched it I to episode three, mm-hmm. and then some somebody the started predicting the future, future and I'm like, nope, this is it. Not watching the show. And the fact that he's bringing up yeah, but waits so long. Say, well, we got to be skeptical of the scientific community, and then go, Loch Ness monster's real. And you're like, there's no like way that he's physically future, fucking real. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's How impossible. Is there no way the Loch Ness monster's real. There's not enough. There's not enough things for him to be able to consume. You also have to have it's other things right. that he can actually mate with. He's fucking magical, Carly. No, the only way it works is if he's magical. <clears throat> he's just existed forever. Magic. When when was the first sighting supposedly? I thought it was. Well, he's way too old for a sea creature. Yeah. I, well, no, how long? Sea creatures can hang in there, I think. Oh, whales. Uh, there's a whale right now who's older than the book Moby Dick. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's like 140 years old. Oh yeah, whales. They're like 200 year old. But whales but the thing but the thing is for that for that particular type of 
dinosaur to continue to exist right now. We're talking about generations upon generations upon generations, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years have time split up between so that time. Yeah. You know, we're like our lives are closer to the lives of T Rex than T Rex to Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus, yeah. yeah. That's I just read that. Nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. I haven't heard that. Yeah. And then um flight the one about flight too was really interesting. Yeah. Um between the Wright brothers flying the first plane and landing on the moon, sixty six years. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So when is singularity well, going to be in? The moon, is, is a singularity <laughs> going to be in five years with that math? <laughs> yeah, singularity. Landing it should be in like five. Yeah, transhumanism. What do you guys think about landing on the? You're not, not like, uh, conspiracy. Not like I think it's an interesting story. I I really like. At the end of the day, I believe that we yeah. went to the moon. There's but a really I, good video online of the guy who talks about it from a video perspective, from a filmmaker's perspective. Uh, all of that, anything that I ever like, the, the the thing that's most interesting to me about it is the motive that they would have to fake it, mm, yeah, as psychological warfare against the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. You know, it like, makes sense for that. It it totally makes sense for that, and uh, you know, then there's the question of why didn't they? I mean, but it's a government program. So if somebody says, yeah. well, why haven't they been there since 1972? Because it's a government program. No, no, it deteriorated. No, well, it deteriorated, and there's no reason to go back. It'd be a great... I, I don't understand why... It would be an people, people, amazing place to put a telescope. You know how far into space you could see with a telescope on the moon? Wow, that argument's great. I never thought about that. Huh. Thank you. I wonder how maintenance cool. would be, though. Yeah, no, no, actually... Yeah, the maintenance on that would be yeah, a bitch. The a aliens that live there. No, which and is we, how we, you'd have we to should, start like a moon colony. We shoot telescopes into space instead. I know, but if they like, yeah. it'll like fucking Pluto. I mean, they're past Pluto already. The telescopes that we have that. that yeah. I and mean, we do have a Mars rover. But the Hubble, the problem was the the lens broke. That did happen. You guys hear about the people who are going to live on Mars? Would you live on, on Mars? Mars? No, no, because you can't come back. Not. Those guys aren't coming back. They're not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. They'll die on Mars. Yeah. yeah. I don't They're even want to go to space. You should read Packing for Mars to, to understand why you do not want to this next ever go to space. Do you say Fourth place. The, I like how the between be, uh, the show conversation moon. right now has been way more interesting than the entire show. during the break and I kind of want to pick your guys' brain about uh, the singularity and transhumanism where do you guys land uh, uh, on that well it, it, as far as the topic of our brain being able to be put into a hard drive in order to be able to extrapolate it in that way the more and more we're seeming to understand about the brain the less we're understanding about the brain well at least I mean even from even from the idea that our brain is what controls all of our thoughts and everything it's actually a tie between our gut and our brain itself, right? So our gut actually stores a lot of the dopamine and serotonin that then rush to our brain. So it's our entire body that is controlling the ways that we experience the world. So for it to be able to just be easily brought in and uploaded uh, seems to have a lack of acknowledgement of how the brain actually works, like kind of a 1995 idea, but then you're, you're transposing it onto 2015 type of technologies. So you're starting to take all these huge leaps in what we could possibly do in the future while ignoring the fact that it's becoming so so much more complicated in trying to just understand the brain as a whole. It kind of runs into the whole uh, idea that if we could just perfectly map out the brain, we could put everything else together perfectly. And I'm not. Uh, we do not have the scientific data to even suggest that that is possible. Nor I mean, we we honestly don't even have enough data to suggest whether or not we have free will or not. So to even get to the point of being able to upload it into a hard drive to me seems slightly silly. Well, but the idea of of being able to create new organs so that we can live longer fuck yeah absolutely that i'm wonderful. honestly like i hear ray kurzweil talk about this stuff i'm like dude have you ever heard of the state mm. you know like that it scares the <laughs> shit out of me in this world that we live in now like the idea of being able to upload like g g giving some system control of your consciousness if that was even possible yeah. you know yeah and then you i mean who knows I, I i would have that conversation in a voluntary world but not before yeah, you know well, that's do, too. That's do you too think technology will outpace the state? B the state has it first. That's a problem. You know, I but mean, it's, 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 a, it's a small window, and that window of their technological superiority is continually going smaller and smaller. I mean, look at a cell phone. Twenty years ago, 
you know, the the uh, communication powers that we all have in our pocket was, was almost pretty much held just by people uh, of high power like the president or CEOs and stuff like that. That's the problem with the government's, though, touch on to the medical system, i.e. Obamacare or the socialist medication, the Medicare system we've had uh, since before that where – it stifles all of that. And the big problem with medicine and its ties with the government is as soon as anything comes out, well, everyone should have that. Well, everybody should have to pay for that because technology isn't necessarily, as we, we think of it right now, considered as a universal right or necessary. And that's why it keeps on getting better and better. Every single time the state says everyone needs this, it tends to get worse because it stifles progress. Right. Everyone doesn't need a new form of currency. College. Yeah. College. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Um so when it talk, comes to the topic of medicine, though, that's where it gets really, really screwed up. And I think a lot kind of gets forgotten with that. They stifle so much progress. Yeah, I, I can't. Mean, the FDA fucks things up. I can't buy a hard drive that hasn't been touched by the NSA already or, or some government organization that's al- allowed to put a backdoor on whatever computer device that I buy. Mm-hmm. They're allowed yeah. to do that. They're allowed to, you know, the FBI can turn on your webcam without uh, the little light coming on saying that your webcam is on. Like, they have that ability. Yeah. So why wouldn't they have that ability when it comes time to making people robots? Yeah. You know? uh, d- and it just the, the different scopes of, of transhumanism, when people discuss it, it's such a kind of a wide variety of, of ideas. I mean, I'm all down for living as long as I possibly can while yeah. I'm here on this earth. I'm not making the assumption whatsoever that I'm going to live forever. I well, mean, I think that's, that's slightly silly. Every, uh, every human being has almost thought, at least from, you know, when they're 20s, I'm going to be the one who lives forever, and they all die. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the way technology is increasing, that could change. But for me, I don't even, I don't even try to like uh, live that way. I live today. I live every day as if it's my last. I try to live now as much as I can. Well, you wouldn't pay your bills if you thought today was your last day. Within that's reason. A, within reason. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Trust me. Type trust thing. me. Within reason. Like I, I I'm go out of my way. I'm gonna collect all tickets today because fuck it. Tomorrow no, no, nothing no. to go. I mean, one thing that I really discovered, like living here and whatnot, how you chill out, but at the same time, I'm trying to live free and now as much as I can. Uh, without being in a cage or dying Let's, or whatnot. And I'm just sitting here worried about how many people at the FBI have seen my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you Snapchat? worried about that? He said they could turn my webcam on. They can't, yeah, yeah, I'm paranoid, but granted, but I'm also very like free willing. So yeah. sometimes I'll turn on like I'll just, I won't turn it on. I'll just put my webcam out and dance naked in front of it for like a good 45 minutes. 45 like, minutes to they no have, music, right? They have no, to, to watch. To, to, to lose yourself to dance. <laughs> lose yourself to dance. I can you sure that the FBI is getting the rotation. music feed through the webcam? Because <laughs> 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 otherwise they're just going to think you're silly. <laughs> Oh. They're gonna be like, "This is no context for me." Yeah, I'm on, so I'm one of those people, though. I I know they do it, and everything. And there's people that like, you know, they put the the tape over their cameras and on well, their phones. I actually, yeah, I've got a note card over my computer camera. Right I now. use I encryption when encry- encryption is more for someone else. So if I'm doing like, you know, some legal stuff mm-hmm. uh, regarding well for legal that yeah, yeah for any of that uh, for for someone else I do that uh, with uh, for instance my phone. Uh, now that I don't know, no longer have an iPhone, I use an encrypted line whenever I want to call specific people. See, you you are a better anarchist than I am, sir. I may be a horrible statist um, on purpose. I'm no more. I'm not a good statist whatsoever. But I, I'll be honest. I'm a bad anarchist. I should use encryption more than I I do. I've used it, but not that much. One of the frustrating things, though, is that the NSA has all these programs that are running, and they're trying to weaken encryption systems. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, the whole NSA makes us safer. They're actually putting us in more danger, because even if somebody doesn't want to use encryption or doesn't do it, I have nothing to hide in what I do online. Well, you, you don't want your social security number out there. You don't want your bank information out there. And, and by weakening encryption systems systematically, you know, from where, where's their headquarters? The NSA? Yeah. Oh, they got a Utah? Utah. They got, Utah. The Utah? Yeah, they they got Utah. one in Utah, yeah. 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 One of the main ones, main hubs in Utah. So they're just making everyone's online information. I mean, they could eventually have the technology to just blast right through uh, all these encryption systems, yeah, which Edward, is very scary. Edward, Edward Snowden is discussing the fact that, you know, people are giving this, trying to do encryption through the phone calls NSA can get through. But here's the thing. You're just putting a little bit more of a barrier just so you have yeah. a little bit more of a shot. Like if all of my emails are going perfectly through freaking Gmail – which, you know, Google and backdoors of the government, they've kind of done it a lot. Yeah. Um, you have everything sequenced there. And here's the thing. if it, And it's not even just for me. Let's say I had an email exchange with Bradley Spangler. Now, all that stuff is tied back to me. So if, one, if someone goes after one person that I know, maybe for doing something actually screwed up like mm-hmm. Spangler did, 
uh, then it's all tied back to me. I'd rather not have all those nice little connections so they can just put it all together perfectly just to screw me over. Yeah. Might as well make it just a little bit more of a headache for them. And if it's not even that much more difficult on your end, for instance, you know, using a little more of an encrypted line uh, when you're doing emails, um, when you're you know, making specific phone calls, or even when you're dealing with certain kind of currency exchanges, like using something besides Coinbase to get Bitcoin where it actually ties your bank account to your Bitcoin, which just seems insane to me. Um, you know, just, just making, making it that just more difficult for the state can actually be really beneficial just for your own self. And for your own, like, you know, for the safety of other people, too. Yeah. Well, when we come back, maybe I'll be a little bit more of a better anarchist to get my own digging on. accidentally hit the button and oh, closed no. it. I have the same damn phone. No, I just hit the main screen button. Red gets one million cool points. I see the so chat going on. Oh, my God. I haven't been thinking about What? About organs and immortality. Oh, Apparently, we owe her $500. I don't know. $500. How do cool yeah. points yeah. convert to Dogecoin is what I'm wondering. Is cool one points trillion Dogecoin per one cool point? Are cool points available on BTC E like yet? Are they available on the blockchain yet? <laughs> Who is the Satoshi of cool points? Public can say what? What's that? Oh, apparently we owe Warren 177 extra dollars for the rooms. <laughs> How much were the rooms down there? I don't know. She has yet to show an invoice. I have no we idea. We still haven't talked about that. I, I, I thought they were like 175 bucks a night. Was it? Yeah. I give you an order and you're gonna obey it. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, that's that's me. Between between me and four of the people is actually 49 bucks a person. It was 200 bucks a night. Okay. Well, you and Calvin. Me, Calvin, and then uh, this other girl, and this other person. No, yeah. You said it was like 35. 49 bucks. Per person. That's still more than she expected us to pay, and then she said that I mean it's still less. She said we owed her fifty five dollars for the room. That's it. Both. This is why we have no, contracts. No, all of us. And it was too much. Yeah. Why we have contracts. And then apparently they charged her an extra one hundred and seventy seven dollars. Speaking of, have for what? Contracts. Right you, did you guys leave late? No. Brett. It's frames, right? When you get a chance, you should read one of those yeah, contracts. No. I doubt yeah. she's going to bullshit you on that. No, she, I mean, yeah, she can she's, buff her you might, en- you might enjoy it. There are a couple of contracts. There's two contracts up there, but you, you'll enjoy the second one. I'm assuming you would. <laughs> but <laughs> let's talk about... <laughs> it's trying to fuck you right in the asshole. Is this thing carrying on? Alright, I got two things I want to bring yeah. up. We were thinking of having a um, uh, more of a low key cool party uh, uh, Thursday before the reform. Okay. If you guys are down. Yeah. We, we were. Yeah, well, I'm not working Friday, so. We being me and other people. Oh. What, Thursday? Yeah. Just like a lower key one oh. for like not everyone. You know? I gotcha. I'm doing, I'm doing a speech Friday in the AM. So I'm probably not. Yeah. Because we're gonna do uh, Bo's gonna do two different because we're gonna do the ketamine setup. Make it look awesome. Really? Yeah. Because red le- red pill media whatever person videotape pork fest and labor reform speeches. I don't release either, and I've emailed them and haven't gotten a fucking video back. Wow. Fuck them. You yeah, you can't. Yourself. You got. Yeah, you, you have, have to film. film you always have to film yourself. Which or annoys or me though because they, because they make it sound like oh we're, we got you. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. Yeah. It's what fucking that, there. Yeah. Really What's shit. the point of recording it if you don't publish it? I don't fucking understand it. And Carla got <laughs> Carla got mad at me. Carla got mad what, at what's me. The point, like, what's the point of recording it and you not guys publishing have four it? Four cameras dude. going? No. Three. We have three. I gotta talk to you about your setup. Yeah. Please do. What are you what are you using? Are you using Minicam? Wirecast. Wirecast. Wire crash. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Now, d- wire, does Wirecast I stream? I ca- catch Wait, it too. does Wirecast stream? I can do a, vi- a virtual camera out, which I'm doing right now to Google Hangouts to broadcast on YouTube. Mm-hmm. 
and we're broadcasting to connect via TeamSpeak to so, but LRN. I could I could do Wirecast to Ustream. Yeah. Yeah. And Does I'm, Wirecast cost anything? Can I change the camera angles. No, yes. That, well, it, yes, it costs. Money. It does cost money. What? I can't. I can't do this. If you decide to pay for it, it costs money. I can chat. Back to the Rebel Love Show. Uh, we are broadcasting from Manchester, New Hampshire, and Halloween. And uh, I wanted to bring up something that Shire Dude here uh, came out publicly earlier on his uh, Facebook page, I think about a week ago or so. Uh-oh. And you are finally, you've come out as uh, Ian Googling. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> no, that was a joke. I was joking. No, that's not a joke. No, that's it, that's it, legit. You. you really are Ian Googling. It has to be you. On the Shire Dude Facebook page, I posted uh, hashtag I am Ian Googling. Because you are I Ian waited Googling. like three hours and then I posted as a comment hashtag false alarm. Because it's no. not me. No, no, no. no it's, it's not you. me. I'm convinced almost 100% that it is either Christopher Cantwell. Oh, it's nice. Because I heard about it from him first, <laughs> and no he he's the one who brought it up at Applebee's that it one. It just doesn't Fateful seem night. like, I know, I mean. No, 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 like, no, no, no but yeah, the thing no. is, is, Chris Cantwell's all about himself. Exactly. That's why so Ian Googling yeah. also owns Out of Context Cantwell. So he's got two venues. Oh, that would be clever. No, no I think clever. it's it's definitely you. You could be on a team. I'm thinking it's maybe you and Cecilia. Well, I, that's the thing. Is I don't, uh, to be honest, to be really, really honest, uh, no, no offense, Cantwell, I don't consume any of his content. I've never, I've never I watched, think I think, a single Cantwell video except for Cantwell. the flag burning one because that was I didn't say fun. that uh, out of context count. But uh, that's the Cantwell thing. Is that's you. why I can't be in Googling why because not? I'd also have to be out of context Cantwell. And the second you start to say, well, then it's you and other people, your theory is getting a little too crazy and too magical. All I know is you always, you're trying to pinpoint like who it is. And every time you try to pinpoint who it is, somehow you're involved with that person. There, well, no, Ian and Googling has been trying to pin me from the start. That's the thing. It's very Shire Dude material. It is, which is why I'm a good like for patsy, for the listeners that, or the watchers at home. Uh, <laughs> go on Twitter and just uh, go to Ian Googling. It's basically everything uh, Ian Freeman would Google, and there's a lot of inside it's baseball hilarious. in there. It's funny. It really is funny, I've but it's a lot of inside baseball. I've submitted Vegas. jokes as well to Ian Googling uh, via Twitter message. So this, my thinking was that it was maybe Michael Dean, and my theory was that the creamy D. There was a lot of stuff from inside Keen, yeah. But he has a connection to Keen through Derek. That's the so thing. So that was my theory. He's been asking Ian Googling has been asking the about section for content, so anyone can submit jokes. So that's that's why it could be a lot of inside Keen stuff. Things Ian would Google. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's the whole. The, every it is Twitter post that he of, does. It's is got what kind of a Ian crowdsourced aspect. Oh, so it's and not that's like why a mastermind. It's confusing people. Yeah. Well, uh, there's definitely a mastermind. Rios. But, yeah. That's nah, not Rios. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, it, it's, it's sure Rios doesn't listen to Puking the Game. Actually, Rios doesn't listen to any podcast at all. Yeah, because uh, it's somebody who listens to Puking the Game. Yeah. Someone who listens to Cantwell. See, I think it might be Nick from Puking the Gang. That's, but he wouldn't do that because he doesn't care about well, any of that. And See, he doesn't. No, no, he, I don't no, know. Here's, I a, here's the thing. The, uh, back in January, we went out to uh, uh, Keen, both of us were on Free Talk Live, and we went to Applebee's afterwards. Uh, there is a thing uh, at there at that table. There's a picture uh, of uh, everyone was at that table, and uh, Shire dude specifically said. Now, mind you, this is assuming that he is, and I'm under the impression that now he is Shy uh, Ian Googling. I'm kind of run with that now. I do believe that he is, but in the off chance that he isn't, whoever is either. Uh, de- definitely was at that table or is in uh, works with whoever is in Googling because at that table yeah. he brought up about how if it's anything that he does, he puts his name on it. Literally the next day in the about section of that account, it put uh, his Twitter handle in the about section. It's bigger than the moon landing, guys. <laughs> it's bigger than AIDS, <laughs> HIV, any of that stuff. It's larger than the whole thing. Oh man! Uh, it really puts things in the context whenever you're trying to break down. You know. Speaking yeah. of segues, we were talking about ISFLC earlier. Yes, we were. I definitely wanted to get to that. So, International yeah. Students for Liberty Conference. Uh, I went. T- yeah, you got a photo of uh, Vicente Fox getting an interview. Oh yeah, that was weird. I was walking around, and Vicente Fox was just 
It was like Vicente Fox was just everywhere. Like it was like a game. It was just like, oh, it's Vicente Fox again. And he's just chilling out in his Nikes, just hanging. And then uh, you took a photo of me taking a photo of Vicente Fox. Yes. Which Whoa. I did love the meta. Uh, I'll have that post at some point. Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to post things. Sure. Maybe that was part of the event. Like he just pops up. Yeah, <laughs> they paid him like a hundred thousand dollars. Hola. Uh, there was uh, <laughs> a lot of status there. Hola. Like f- for me, it was it was a little bit of an odd event because it was for again students, right? Yeah. I'm no longer a student. I used to run a chapter of Young Americans for Liberty over at U- University of Texas San Antonio, um, and so I actually got to run into some fun people from there. But I mean, a lot of it was just kind of a ooh raw like. Liberty, 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 liberty. Like it's just people repeatedly saying that word and then occasionally just like talking about how great it was that Ron Paul was there. Yeah. And I never gave a fuck about Ron Paul. I will never give a fuck about Ron Paul because I didn't really care I, before. I, I Because I, I was, became an anarchist like back in like 2005. So when he started talking, yeah, when he started to get more press in 2008, I just thought it was an old guy who was half right about stuff, but he's mostly defending a piece of paper w- filled with blood that defended slavery. So it's not like I, I, I looked at that and I didn't go, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, see, well, yeah, for me, I'm on the other fence. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for me discovering Ron Paul. And I know a lot of people in the community are mm-hmm. you know, influenced by Ron Paul before they got to an anarchist stage. Like, I'm not trying to be hipster libertarian. About oh, no, this. no, I'm no, just, no. I, yeah. I hear you about that. Yeah, no, I get yeah. that. Yeah. Just and a bunch of noobs. That right? was actually my first time ever seeing Ron Paul. So I was, I, I, I enjoyed it. But, uh, but no, for the most part, to me, like, yeah, I mean, it definitely was a student thing because there are so many people there that uh, I ran into a lot of good anarchists and volunteers and stuff like that. But there were some conversations I had with other people, like talking about the Free State Project and other stuff. And, they just seem so status like they i i had a conversation with someone that was in line i i got my photo taken with ron paul and i was talking to the person in front of me uh well me and Anne got a picture together um and uh this guy was a hardcore minarchist like he was a hardcore minarchist he want I, I, I literally got to the point where like if I, I'm, this guy made me an anarchist so i'm out to get a picture with like if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be an anarchist you know, and I'm in line with this guy who is a hardcore status and believes that violence can be used to defend the state. This came up in the conversation. Yeah. In line to have my picture taken with Ron Paul was like, why are you advocating violence against me? How did well, he advocate we, violence against you in the line? Because he's, he came out as a minarchist and he believes in the state and he believes in taxation. But how did that actually come up in the conversation? I had, it, it originally came up. He we started talking about uh, history and movements and stuff like that because he says he's a history teacher or something like that. We, yeah, we kind of went down that road, um, and uh, I think I questioned uh, the Constitution in Washington and stuff like that. And well, you guys were waiting in the line to go to a dude who wants to be elected to be your leader who backs up a document ah. that was a result of a bunch of people who wanted to keep slavery going. And then you go, oh, I'm shocked that the guy in front of me is for the things that Ron Paul's for. How tall is he, by the way, Ron Paul? Uh, about 5'9", five, 5'8". Five, yeah, you know, because I always see pictures of him from, like, mid-tie up, and I just yeah. picture that he's about five, three nine, feet tall, five. and he stands on, like, a platform. I, I wasn't, like, I wasn't towering like over him. That's good. That means I can wear high heels right. when I slow dance with him. Ron, stand on the platform <laughs> for picture time. But he's only this big. He's, like, a Yoda <laughs> size. Rand's also pretty tiny. He wears heels. 5'9 he is not tiny. Rand Paul. Rand kind of looks like shit like Rand elfish. Paul. Rand, he's, he's tiny. And I would imagine When, when we're tiny. watching him speak, I was like, that guy's wearing fucking heels. Yeah. Like good, you know, good, uh, good push step, good five yeah. inches there. I, I can't stand Rand Paul. I love Ron Paul. But, always but, will, but I, I hate Rand. But Paul. here, here's the thing, though. I mean, when we're when you're in that line, there's sh- it should be completely expected <sighs> that the person there hasn't extrapolated based off things that Ron Paul did not say to be an anarchist. Well, it's like they just like, stopped I, there. I, I, they stopped at that stepping stone. Like his role to play is to wake up like status and conservatives into like liberty and they keep that's going. That's your extrapolation from there. of it. And, and there's his, so many others yeah, that I've met but that his have was, had that same vote experience. Me in and give me a shit ton of money by the so way. So would you argue a lot of money and a lot of man hours, tons, hundreds, thousands of man hours don't, by volunteers. Don't you like it when people give you donations? Do I like it? Oh, absolutely. And I'm not trying to vote to be your slave master. That's true. Do you think that Ron Paul was a net positive or a net negative? On a, on the liberty in general. I, I, I can't answer that question because I'm not a central planner. Oh, yeah. 
All Ron right. Paul. Yeah, raise the base. We may bring this back when we come back. Constitution. Ron Paul. I don't think I could talk fast enough to do Carlos. I feel like we're on the same wavelength a lot. Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's. That is the most roundabout fucking way of answering that question, by the way. If you think it's net positive, I don't know. I'm not a central planner. I think that was such a douchebag thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I do need a good media guy. Uh, marketing dude. <laughs> Who just goes with you on when you do <laughs> appearances and he sits there and goes, Oh, Carlos, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fuck you. Dude. I already said it. Fuck you. <laughs> Change more lives. By the way, what are you what doing? What are you writing? I just do this, it, it, it keeps me going. I get that. Yeah. I won't, I won't call you out as being crazy on, on air. Because <laughs> you just went doodly while we're talking. It was almost like I almost stopped because I saw you just like, <laughs> is that, are you writing notes what I say? Because it just looked like squiggles. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, actually, uh, there, was a, there was a take where they were showing what Jon Stewart actually writes whenever he's doing this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just squiggles everywhere. That's weird. Yeah. It just keeps, my, keeps me doing something. Anything and I can guys, actually concentrate hey, really more quick, on what though, people are saying. Is there anything saying. you guys want to touch on in the last second? Uh, no. Whatever. I, I know what I want to talk about. Um, I want you to tell your story. What story? No. Of Shire Dude. Oh, Shire Showing Dude. people Shire Dude stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We can yeah. plug Podcast Masters. Yeah. Oh, Just yeah. plug shit at the end. Plug it. All right? And Just then, plug uh, everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna mention to my website one time. We'll come up to the break at like I think it breaks at 11:58. Plug all the things. 56, I think. 56, okay. maybe 57. Uh, 50, let's, let's say 57. So around 55, 54. Let's start plugging. Yeah, sure. I'll hit you guys up first. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, Love and Love show. And now that we've got Carlos's huge hate for Ron Paul out of the way, we move on to bigger and better things. And uh, that is introducing people to another way to liberty, or just in general, introducing them to Shire Dude material. And uh, <laughs> Brett, you uh, you did some uh, Shire Dude activism earlier. In the, We're just it? scratching our, our, each other's backs, buddy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. If I repost this uh, on, on my uh, podcast feed, I want uh, people to to know about the Shire Dude channel. You definitely need more subscribers. Uh, how how do you describe what you do? Um, yeah, what's your elevator pitch? Oh man. So when I got here to the Shire, to New Hampshire, I uh, I realized there needs to be more a kind of abstraction. More yeah. abstract art, more stuff kind of like AKPF number one, which Garrett Ian does, which I really like. I also like a, a lot of what Vermin Supreme does. Um, and I wanted to kind of repurpose activist footage in yeah. a way that's entertaining and quick. So just five minute episodes that are fun and that touch on all the same kind of themes as these Liberty shows, but they, you know, it's not like a three hour long podcast. It's just something you can consume quick that's funny and entertaining. It's yeah. in the top five, like, most important things that are happening with the Free State Project. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding. No, art needs to come here. Yeah, I got to like, do more we, of that. We, it, definitely we, the, 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 it needs an art scene. It needs something different than just assholes like me yelling into the microphone. I'm going to be filming a, a Liberty Forum episode, which I'm really excited about. Um, and if you come to Liberty Forum, uh, you're going to be in it, like, for sure, for sure. I want to be, like, an actor for you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll do it. Like, um, just you know, some night at the quill. I'll pull out the camera. And we'll no, I mean, the, so I mean, and and contextualize it this way. I mean, all the fun, great movements that we've seen politically over the last hundred years have had some tie into the art movement. You know yeah. what? Oh, and having a bit of fun. I mean, you know. One thing I want to I want to talk about too is um, Obama had Obama girl. You know, um, objectivism had objectivist girl. So like when <laughs> <laughs> your look was when funny. do like I best, get the worst thing that happened to objectivism? <laughs> more, more like the latter. I think I think it's the best. No, the worst thing that happened to libertarianism is libertarian girl. Libertarian girl. Yeah. Oh my god, awful! Just choke on a gun. 
Anyway. <laughs> oh wow. wow. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Go um, ahead. Anyway. Yeah. Where's my sh- where's <laughs> where's Shire chick or whatever you want to call her? Yeah. I don't know. You have many Shire women. Yeah. You're gonna, you're you're doing well. The women of the Shire. I got a I got a really good video that I gotta finish producing. You need to put out another Shire dude episode. Is what you need to do. You need to put everything else on hold and just release new content. Well, the next one that's coming out is the season finale, and that's why it's taken so long. Is because it's gotta be like the best, you know, like, and it's gonna I, encompass everything that you've seen so far. Okay. I, Maybe uh, Shire dude is. <laughs> the libertarian girl of the Shire. What? Like we're not. <laughs> what I'm saying is, we're being gender sensitive. That's it's true. It's like you know how every movement trots out some attractive female. That's, we don't yeah. do that. That's a good yeah, point. We, do. we have Shire dude. Shire dude. Look at him. On my on my own Shire chick. Yeah. Version. Yeah, you're gonna see abstract Whoa. again. You're going going for the trans market. Wow. There you go. There's a market or, or, to be made there. We're like a more trans tolerant society. Do you think uh, anyone every single day, which is fantastic? Has anyone ever gotten a uh, sex change for the benefit of their YouTube channel? I'm sure. I'm sure someone <laughs> has. It's <laughs> live streaming, and, and <laughs> the live YouTube channel sucks change? so bad that we still don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, whoever it was, that's Aww. how bad it was. So. Yeah, that that's terrible. You go through a, a sex <laughs> change operation for the benefit of your viewers, and nobody knows about. And it, it was a Vimeo account. It wasn't even YouTube. <laughs> Do people even use Vimeo? Yeah, they have better. Qu- I mean, they have really good quality. Stuff they also on there. don't have a lot of the copyright Censorship. problems. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it's really good for that. Like uh, the stuff that happened to me with YouTube would have not happened to me. If yeah, I, was I wish YouTube instead. didn't have the uh, uh, Google yeah. central control that they do, but that's where everyone's at. Just like with Facebook, that's where everyone's at. Well, no, you but know, here's, I, the, here's I the thing: is face, but Facebook is everywhere though, but you can also post Vimeo stuff onto Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you can still get hits that way. That's true. Yeah, but uh, I I don't find much content in my feed or anywhere else that's shared that much often from Vimeo. It's almost always exclusively YouTube. Yeah, but like art movies, a bunch of different uh, uh, like artistic projects are put on Vimeo, and it's just a different audience. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people, art students, stuff like I know, go through that. I mean, it was it was the first one that was allowing footage also that wasn't disgustingly compressed like YouTube was. Uh huh. You know, Which is really, yeah, that makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Well, speaking of um, kind of content and how we were talking about how we enjoy the fact that there's uh, Shardy's putting art out in regards to content and the Liberty Media focus, what uh, what kind of stuff do you guys want to see that's not being done today? The, uh, music that isn't shitty. Ooh. Oh. That could be great. And that, I'm that I'm in no way stating that Libertarian music right now is shitty. It, I'm, I, it, it's just there isn't. Right, uh, mm-hmm. it's because the the problem is is that when people have tried to do stuff like that, it's so over the top. Just like we need liberty, yeah. Like it's you, you have to do it in a kind of more artistic way. And the commies have had the stranglehold on art forever. I mean, there's a reason for that. It's because artists have been starving artists, so they make the assumption that the labor theory of value holds some weight. Communists the, are traditionally creative free spirits. Yeah, yeah, they it's, don't want creativity coming out of anyone yeah. else. Yeah, it's important that libertarianism <laughs> doesn't go the way of labor, like libertarian podcasters who go, "Well, I put in a lot of work, therefore I deserve money." This very labor theory of value. No, I, I'm not doing you know? this. I think I'm going to. No, make well, I, but I understand. I mean, that's where a lot of musicians and artists come from, though. Mm-hmm. Because I did this, therefore I deserve something. Yeah. So if we can try and figure out a way to to get from there, I mean, and honestly, that's something I could actually do. I mean, how I've been playing music since for three fourths of my entire life. What kind um, of music would you do? Um, I mean, classical guitar was kind of my background. I played for a bunch of punk bands. I did anarchist stuff with them. But trying to find somewhere in New Hampshire to do that has actually been kind of shown to be a bit difficult. Really? Uh, finding people... Um, hell, if there's some free skaters out there, this is just a throw right now. If you play uh, bass or drums, give me a shout out. Because I uh, certainly did that a lot in other cities that I lived in. Okay. You should just f- go out with your stand-up bass and find people in life who are like, doing transitions like yeah. they're leaving work boop and you just you just lay down out. a big seinfeld bass stinger yeah. for them Man. <laughs> i totally filmed i that. did that all throughout <laughs> high school I and just, he can film it total yeah. shire dude material <laughs> yeah. we're on it we can just, we do this kind of, yeah fuck yeah all right yeah. okay all right. transitions right. do you still have a stand-up bass no oh, but i could rent one for like five bucks <laughs> all right yeah it should be easy to do that'd be fun yeah sounds a good time what about you brett what, what would you like to see I agree. I think music would well. Uh, b- number one for me would be filmmaking. Yeah, mm. and I mean like An making film. Mo- well, not you documentary, know, but a, like a written, acted film. Using like a red or whatever, you know, like a really high end digital camera to something that was cinema quality, which is now possible. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so getting cheaper and cheaper. Getting together, writing a script. I mean, they're they're shooting Hollywood movies on cameras that cost six, seven thousand dollars. That's something that we could definitely obtain, you know, with the right group and the right project mm-hmm. to put that money behind. And, you know, and don't don't base it off of, you know, some outdated fiction book that doesn't really hold any weight to what is now. And don't be heavy handed um, mm-hmm. with the film scripts either, because there was one movie that I'm not going to name that was so overstated as far as like the message of the movie. Why did you say the name of the movie? Yeah. Silver Circle. It yeah, was I know. awful. Oh. It was just awful. It was Actually, awful. I haven't even seen it yet. It was, t- don't. No, it I, was. I, everyone raves about that. Be, I, then, mm. they, then that's then they, that tells me that the market is primed for quality content. If they think that was okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyways, we're coming up near the end. Uh, Carlos, where can people find you? At? Find my book at legallykidnapped.net. It's called Legally Kidnapped: The Case Against Child Protective Services. And Brett, where can uh, the fine people of uh, Rebel Love Show find you at? Uh, my website is schoolsucksproject.com. If people want to get more interactive, we have a group on Facebook. You can just find it by searching School Sucks Project. Follow me on Twitter, School Sucks Show, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, username School Sucks Podcast. Check out some of our videos. Oh, hey, d- and I'll throw in one last thing there. Um, go to cpsvictimsupport.com. It's my new website. I don't use truthovercomfort.net anymore, so that you can find all my videos and everything else there, and also additional help if you need any stuff with uh, Child Protective Services. Just like, not, just not in person. Just <laughs> fucking. Do you have like a fan group, Carlos? Because I noticed that's a thing now for podcasts to have like like fan groups. Yeah, but it's completely filled with forty-year-old women from California. Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's really hot. <laughs> I, nice. I need to move out to Cali. It's warm there. Got all these like nice Mexican women with large breasts <laughs> to just kind of hug me, say that I'm their hero. It sounds great. I'm down, <laughs> down for the struggle. Brett, thoughts? You want to come with me? Ah, 40 <laughs> Mexican I don't know <laughs> <laughs> All right Shire dude, where can people find you at Oh you can find everything Everything for me at ShireDude.com And uh, it's, I've actually set up I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show yet I've set up playlists on there That uh, it's like automatic upload From each of my shows So anytime there's a new Shire dude episode Any year now uh, It'll be right, right there on the front page And then right next to that Is the Rebel Love Show episodes That are coming out And right next to that Is the It's Like This 2 episodes That I'm doing as well With Cecilia it's all right there on shiredude.com. And you can also find this show at rebelloveshow.com. You can find my all my content at rebel.com. And uh, go like us on Facebook. Go buy Liberty Forum tickets and come party with us at Liberty Forum. And we're out, guys. Peace.